I'm making um, project three out of this book, Silver Jewellery Making, by myself and Marky DeWard. And project three is on um, stone chip earrings. So it's here, this project. And it will tell you that the materials that you need and then we'll give you instructions on moving forward, also the tools and things that you need to make this project. So the first thing that we're gonna need um, to make this are the stone chips, which are here. And the second thing is the round silver wire, and this is 0.8 round wire, and this is all you need to make this project. But there is a proviso because sometimes the stone chips have smaller holes drilled in them so you will uh, not be able to get the 0.8 wire through let's see what happens here that goes on so I can use the 0.8 wire for all of this if the holes were a little bit smaller in these chips then um, I would have to go down to 0.6 and get a length of that so the first thing that we're going to do is make some jump rings uh, to hang the earrings from. And to make the jump rings, don't cut the wire and use the large part of the round nose pliers. Some round nose pliers are a lot thinner like this here. If you make these too small, they're going to be difficult to solder because we are going to solder these jump rings. So. If you have got a pair that are very small at the base of the nose here, it might be wise to get um, a knitting needle former and just clamp it down like this and wind the wire around like this. And you do it six times, four, five, six and if you use this method it's good to not waste this bit of wire here but to go back with some flat nose pliers and squeeze it round like this and those rings will just be slightly bigger than the ones that would have been made with the the thicker part of these round nose pliers but I'm going to do it with the round nose pliers to show you how you do that as well. So I'll clip this off. And the reason why you make them on the wire, the length of wire, is because you've got the length of wire to hold on to when you cut the jump rings. So here we go. I'm winding right at the base of the round nose pliers here and grip. And you put your thumb against the nose and twist your wrist. Let go spin inside that and grip and then turn and let the end of the wire come out the side towards the point of the end of the pliers so that you will keep winding on the same point of the pliers so all your rings will be the same size and try and wind it so that there's no gap between them. So I've gone around twice now. I've got my index finger underneath here and my thumb very close to the nose of the pliers. And spin and count every time the end comes up. Three, four, five, six. Now I'm gonna do one for luck. You never know, you might melt one when you come to soldering seven there we go so there's the little spiral as you can see there's no gaps between the next thing you've got to do is cut them so that they then become individual rings and i poke them onto the corner of my peg here and you can see that i'm gripping the wire in my hand like this and pinching the spiral of wire between my index finger and thumb and i poke the point of the, the corner of the peg into the spiral and I will cut in between my fingers here. And what you end up doing is cutting the one furthest away from you and that's not the one that you're holding on to the end. Otherwise you'll lose your handle. 
So that first bit was a little bit springy because it wasn't tight, so it was moving up and down with the blade, but here we go. That's a few of them. Just take them off the blade. And now for the rest of them. Now this really is not the easiest of things to cut. You're cutting quite close to your fingers, but you can see that I've got the saw very close to the wood on the peg. So it's gonna come through and hit the wood on the peg. And this is what's clamping it. Now I've got a few there. I can actually put it here and hold it like this and carry on cutting. And it doesn't matter if you cut through to the wood on the peg. In fact, it's almost good if you do because that will cut off the burr that you get. There we are. Let's come out. If you do cut through to the wood, just be careful as you take the blade out so that you don't break it. So one of the difficult things is getting them off the blade. Here we go. <laughs> come off. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then the seven one for luck. If you really do struggle cutting those with the saw, I'm going to make another spiral up now and just show you what you can do. I'll just do three this time. Three. You can use your wire cutters and snip through one at a time. And the reason why I cut them through, actually you can go through if your cutters are quite good, more than one. The reason you cut through with a saw is you end up with a nice square end on your wire ready to solder. With these ones that you've cut with wire cutters, they'll need to be opened a little like this sideways. Don't pull them open sideways. And then with a file, and again, my hand is supported on the peg. You just need to file them square at the ends because the wire cutters cut them into a wedge shape. So I'm just going to file all these so that they are not, they're ready for soldering and not confused with the ones I've cut with the saw. It's that one and this one. So you can either cut them with the saw, if you are struggling, cut them with your wire cutters. And then file not ready for soldering. Right, so now you're going to start to solder these together. So you want to put four of them ready for soldering. So you get two pairs of flat nose pliers and you, you twist them sideways to bring them together and line them up. Make sure they're lined up from the top as well like this. That's one. Two. This one's three. Now this one you can see is a little bit distorted, so I'm going to use that as my number seven. If there is a slight burr there, it's a little bit that's not quite cut through. If you go backwards and forwards like this, you can knock it off because you want these absolutely together. And if they're not together, this one's slightly sprung apart, just go sideways, push it together a little bit and pop it back together again. There we go. And if it's not the same height, you can squeeze it that way. Three, and we want one more. So there are four ready for soldering. Four, good. I'm just going to put these to one side now and get on with the ear wires 
and one, two, three, four, five, six. Great, let's move these across. And the end pins. So again, we're using the 0.8 round wire and we're going to measure two pieces that are, let's make sure I'm following the book, two pieces that are six centimeters long for Clip that last little bit off there that's curled over I think. When you cut wire make sure the bit that you're clipping off you catch with your fingers so it doesn't spring in the eyes. So two pieces six centimeters long and that's for the ear hooks and I'm cutting these with the wire cutters. I'm only going to measure once and then use that as my measure for the next one. And then you need six pieces. That's one piece for each chip because these are going to be the end pins. You need six pieces which are five centimeters long or 50 millimeters. So I'm going to cut one again. These aren't hard and fast measurements, but they're useful to have one. Let's unfurl this. Three. Four. So just to recap, I've now got six lengths of five centimeters long. Each length is going to have one of these chips on it. So these are going to be the end pins. I've got two lengths, one centimeter longer, so six centimeters long to make the ear hooks that are gonna go through the ears. And I've got six jump rings which the chips are going to hang from and I'm going to make two lengths of chain with three jump rings in each one. So here are the um, lengths of wire for the ear hooks, the six lengths of wire for the end pins and the four jump rings that I've closed ready for soldering. And the first thing I'm going to do is melt the balls on the end of the end pins and the ear wires. So the torch that I'm using is here and switch this one, switch this on. Now, the whole part of this flame is the point of the light blue just here. And you can tell when the work is in the flame because the flame goes orange. And I'm going to pick up one of these. I've got them hanging off the end of the board so that I can pick them up. And I'm going to dangle the very end of the wire there, like that. Just going to run the wires through the flame because this is non annealed wire, so it's slightly hard. Now for the next one, there it goes. And I'm pointing it down so that the ball rolls up the middle of the wire. This one's got a bend on it, so I'm making sure that I'm pointing it down. Make sure that you have the flame on the end of the wire because if you have it in the middle up here you'll just burn straight through it and the end will drop off. I'm popping them in the pickle because as you heat them they'll oxidise and blacken and the pickle will just take the black off the end. So 
uh, switch this off, make it safe. So here we go. And the next thing I'm going to do is to prepare the jump rings for soldering. And this is, in this exercise, we've used the positioning of the soldering as a way of getting more experience of soldering. So we're going to place it in different places. So first of all, it has to be fluxed. So I'm dipping the borax cone in water and with that water, grinding it round like this until it looks like skimmed milk. Don't have it really, really thick. We also mention in the book that you can use a piece of slate like this as a borax dish and it will grind round on this as well, as you can see. But I'll use that. And now, because I cut these through with a saw, they should be clean for soldering and I'm fluxing where I want the solder to go. And I've put the open end of the jump ring the furthest away. So not this side, but the furthest away. If I have it this side, there's a chance that when I'm heating here, the whole jump ring can melt. There's less risk if you have the join of the jump ring far away from you. And I'm going to use hard solder to solder these. Now the solder that it comes in strips like this and it usually comes it when you buy it it comes silver colored like this and you can tell what kind of solder it is by the width. You can see this one is slightly wider than the other one. The widest one is hard solder and what that means it melts at the highest temperature. And I've colored it red so that when I cut little pieces off it and I then have the pieces in there, if they're red, I know they're hard solder because once they're cut, you don't know how wide the piece you cut them from is. So I'm now going to pick up a small piece of solder that I've already cut and place it over the join. And the most important thing is that it must be touching the ring and it must be on the join and I'm putting one against it like that and the next one against it like that and then this one I'm going to place underneath the jump ring and it's a good thing to try because you just want to see if it's easier for you so if you place the solder on the block and then move the, sol the jump ring on top of it, then the solder is trapped underneath. And the reason for that you'll see in a minute. The fourth jump ring, I'm going to pick solder. And it's called pick soldering because you pick it up with a pick which is made of steel so that the solder doesn't run on it. And you can buy pick solders. I've got one here that I've made up out of an unfurled large paper clip and I filed it down to a, a blunt taper and put it in a, a cork. And I'm going to use the back of the tweezers to do this. This is um, one of the things that we do in the book. And you're going to melt, roll up the solder into a ball and then take the flame away and scoop it up with the back of the tweezers and place it. So here we go. So I have the tweezers behind the solder as I roll it up, so when it goes into a bowl it can, the fort of the flame can roll it away. And there it is, picked up on the back of the tweezers. And now I'm going to heat up the jump ring and transfer the solder on. There it is. And that's pick soldering. It's a very nice way of placing the solder. So now, I'm just going to quench these and join them together with the last two of the jump rings. I've got my solder in half on a baking tray here um, just to protect everything. So now two pairs of flat nose pliers 
open, place two of the soldered jump rings on that one, like that, and close up, like that. And I'm going to hold this in reverse action tweezers away from the solder joint and hang it off the end of the soldering block. Same again for the other one. Opening up the jump ring, opening up the jump ring sideways so you don't distort the circle. Putting the two soldered ones on and doing up and making sure that there's no gap. So if you haven't got two pairs of reverse action tweezers, then solder one, then solder the other one. I'm going to set these two up because I have. Oh, that's not in useful in mine. Let's do that one a bit better. One side is higher than the other. There we go. It's better. Line it up. Fabulous, that's better. And reverse action tweezers. And I'm going to hang it over the edge like that. Right, just put it on this board now. So bringing it in line. Right, so same thing again. Flux. If you don't flux, the solder will not go there because the metal will oxidise and the solder won't go where the metal has oxidized so the flux stops it oxidizing i'm now using easy solder so easy solder has a lower melting point so if i do t by any eventuality run the solder from the jump rings that are already soldered there's if i heat them up there's less risk of that solder running now that one's run down let's make sure we get that's not on there Yes, it is, it's there. Good. So wet it. Now you can pick solder this one as well if you want, which will avoid all this. There we are, just that on and off. But I'm placing these two on. Now I'm going to do the one that's furthest away first. So. left hand and what you've got to do is heat up the air above the jump ring until the flux forms a white powder and dries there we go and now I can keep the torch on it and there it is soldered so I'm going to take that one away so I don't run the risk of it melting while I concentrate on this one so again there we go. And it's gone. I don't think that's gone on the join. So what I'm going to do now, I've got a pair of, a piece of um, solder in the tweezers. And I'm going to melt it so it sticks to one side and then pick soldering. So I'm going to heat up the jump ring and then present the solder like that. There it goes, lovely. And now that you've got them all together in three, you can put them in the pickle so that the oxides and the flux can come off. I've got the pieces out of the pickle now and they're all white and clean and I've rinsed them off and dried them and I've separated out the longer pieces which are the two ear pieces for the ear hooks. They're not 
quite the same length but I'm not going to worry about that until I've actually made them into the hooks and then I'll trim them so they're the same length. You've got the six pieces here which are the end pins and the two lengths of chain made out of the three jump rings for each length. So I'm threading on the beads, the stone chips, onto the wire, the end pins, down to the bottom. And the one thing to check with when you have chosen your chips is that the hole isn't drilled right to the very edge so that there's a chance that that little piece that's left on the edge breaks through and it comes off the wire. So do make sure the ones you do choose have got holes which are... Um, in the middle, towards the middle. That's all of those. And then I'm going to concentrate on making the ear wires next. So I've got my chips onto the end pins and now I'm making the ear wires. At the end where there is a ball, get your round nose pliers and I'm halfway down the nose and just bend it back into a U shape, not completely back onto the wire, just back on itself like that. And the same with the other one. So same place on the pliers so that you get the same shape and bend it back, back on itself into a U. Then grip that U with your finger and thumb like that so it covers the ball and I use one of these pens which most of us have got as a former and if you push your finger and thumb against the pen there and then bend the end of the wire over like this so it's pointing down and then you take it off and do the same for the other one. So grip with your finger and thumb so that it's over the ball and that will give you your spacing so that you're bending the wire around in the same place to try and get a pair. It looks like a pair. There we are. And then with your thumb as a former, just pull it back a bit like this. So I'm, I've closed it in a bit and I've angled it back. And the same for this one, close it in a bit and angle it back. Now I angle it back opposite the U there so I know I'm doing it in a similar sort of place. And I'm going to put them over the top of each other. This one can come in a little bit. And there we are, a matching pair. So now I'm going to grip them so they're together and I can clip them so that they're the same length. Just there. And again, have your finger just so it doesn't spring across the room. And now I'm going to file that into a dome because when you clip it with a needle file, it will leave little sharp edges on that for when you put it through your ear. And we've used 0.8 round wire because we find that that is the nice size wire that fits through the hole in your ear without it feeling like it's stretching the hole in your ear and it's robust enough as well it's not too thin and it's not too thick so just taking off the corners and now I'm just making sure that they're all in one plane this one seems to be kicking out to the right here I'm gonna get some flat nose pliers and just even it up that's that one, lovely. And this one. Great. So there are the two ear wires. I'd like a bit more of a nice curve on that. Then it's just an aesthetic. Gets gets to the point where you your shape of your ear wires becomes characteristic to you. So when people see certain earrings, they'll go, oh yes, that's a so and so piece I can tell by the shape of the ear wire she's used. Okay, so now for the difficult bit. Now we cannot solder these jump rings shut because the stone chips won't take the heat. So what I do is I bend that at a right angles like that. 
So I'm going to do that across all of them. You can put your nail there if you if I had one um, and bend over the top of your nail like that. So where the wire comes out of the stone, I'm bending it at an angle. Let's bend it over the one where I have got a nail, which is that one. Like that. Do it on all of them. I say this is a difficult bit. That's setting you up to make it think it's difficult. It's not necessarily. There we are. Now you get the round nose pliers and you hold them in that bend like that. And you're going to push the wire Let's make that a little bit bigger, I think. So wherever you put it in the pliers is the, the size of the ring you're going to make. So I'm now going to push that over the top and down like that. If I came under again, it would make an oval ring. So I'm going to move the pliers up one like that and then come under like that. And I'm going to do this on all of them. So in the corner, you go up, over, down, move the pliers up and round. In the corner, up, over, down, pliers up and under. Two more to go. In the corner, making sure you can see them. up, over, down. Move the pliers up and come under. Last one. So what I've basically done is made a ring above the chip. And the important thing at this point is to remember to put it onto the chain. So get one of the chains and on the end, thread it onto the link. So it's in the loop. Oop. Come here. There we go. So now it's hanging on the end of the chain. Move these out of the way, make sure it focuses on what I'm doing. Now what you have to do is bring this piece of wire and wrap it around the wire that's coming out of the chip. And this is called a wire wrap loop. And the easiest way of doing this is to grip the, I'm pulling it so that the wire's there's no gap in between here now. And hold it just across the whole jump ring like this and keep the wire at right angles to the wire that you're wrapping. Let's just get that again and go across like that. So this is where the wire is coming out of the bead and I need to wrap around. So I'm going to come around like this And again, because I've got a long end, it's easier to do it with just your fingers. And when you get down to the bead, which I am now, there, like that, I can trim it. And after you've trimmed it, this little end will poke out so do squeeze it in by going across the whole thing like this. Just tuck it in. And there we go. Right, so we're going to do this two more times on this one. 
and repeat on the other side. So I'm going to go through that ring again. So I've threaded it on. You get so concentrated sometimes on doing the wire wrap loop that you forget to put it on the chain, so don't do that. I'm gonna hold the ring and then pull it round. And keep going until you come down to the chip. There we are. And then I'm going to clip the excess wire that I have here and squeeze it in. I can squeeze it in with the flat nose pliers. I'm picking up the chain nose pliers here. Or snipe nose, there we go. So now I've got two on there. And now for the last one. I want uh, a little one. I did choose one big one and two little ones. So I'm going to thread that through the same ring again. Thread it onto the wire, onto that loop. There we go. Are you in? Yeah. So there's the two chains with the three chips on the bottom. And I'm going to hold the ring that I formed out of the wire that's coming out of the top of the chip and go round. Again, keeping this wire at right angles to the whoops, to the wire that I'm wrapping around. There we go, lovely. And trim this. And keep all these scraps because in project seven you use those to make pieces of jewellery from the scrap that you have left over. Here I am squeezing the end in again by going across the whole thing. There we are. Good. So now I have three chips on the end of a chain. And the other side you get your earring, thread it on there and push that ball back against the wire there to stop it coming off. And that is your finished earring ready for polishing. Now for polishing we talked about using a brass brush. Let me go and get one. if you haven't got a barrel polisher. So you can brass brush them like this and then finish them off with a, a polishing cloth if you want. But this, this is a nice new brass brush, quite soft. get into all those little nooks and crannies of your wire wrapping. These can be barreled. These can be put in a barrel polisher if you have one. There. And there you have one of the pair. I'll go ahead and do the other one now and uh, show you the two as the pair. Oops. Get that one on.
Next one. Holding it across the jump ring with the flat nose or the chain nose pliers and wrap all the way down to the chip. Last one. The other end onto your hook, push it back, and last push. I keep looking at this and thinking I just want to get a little bit of a nicer shape on this bit of the ear wire. I want a curve on it, so I'm using some half round ring pliers to put a bit of a curve on that. That's nicer, not just a bend and a straight. It's your personal preference. There we go. There we are, your pair of stone chip earrings. Project three in the book, silver jewellery making.